Welcome. This recording is related to week 5's lecture of the course Insurance Risk Models. In this recording we are trying to explain or give a rationale behind this choice of a probability for the empirical data points. Um, we'll explain that with, the, with this example, with the uh, five observations. Um, so in this example we have five observations and we are fitting an exponential to it. So let me go full screen. Okay, consider this, uh, this, this diagram. You have on the top of it here um, a kind of uh, empirical probability mass function. You have five observations at 0 0.4, 1 0.19 uh, and so on. These four, these five observations here. These five obs observations um, it seems natural to assign to them a probability mass of 1 over 5. But we are modeling a continuous distribution to uh, these data points. So this mass of 1.5 should not, uh, in the end, in our theoretical uh, model, will not be mass exactly at that point. This mass will be distributed around that observation. So what do I, what do you mean, what do we mean, what do I mean uh, by around this observation? I mean um, the following. Here in the blue, the blue dotted lines there are approximately the, the uh, approximately in the middle of the two observations each time. Okay, so you have five, um, five region, this region, this region, this one, this one, and this one goes to the infinity. So, um, intuitively this, um, this probability, this mass should be uh, distributed over that interval. So, what, what does it mean? It means that the CDF at this limit, this frontier, should be 0.2 there. Uh, should probably go through that point. And then we add another point, uh, another 20 percent of mass between these two interval points. So the CDF is likely to go through this point and then again here so through this point and this point and it begins at 0 and it should end at 1 so the dotted lines the horizontal dotted lines you have here are for 0 0.2 0 0.4 0 0.6 and 0.8 Okay, we have the mass of 0 0.2, and then 0 0.2 plus 0 0.2 it's 0 0.4, 0 0.2 plus 0 0.2 plus 0 0.2 it's 0 0.6, and so on. And we could actually try to, to draw um, a CDF going through these points. If it's a continuous CDF, it would probably be something similar to that that kind of, of, of CDF. So, now um, you probably understood it on the, on the uh, below there um, we are plotting the CDF um, of, of, the, of the data points and we said that in the first interval we wanted the CDF to go up, oh, wrong color, to go up 
by 0.2 and then in the other interval to go up by 0.2 and here by 0.2 and so on. So we can consider um, like these boxes That's where um, our uh, uh, empirical, well, where, where our CDF is likely to be. So now we have um, these points there, and we want to assign a cumulative probability to them. So one one uh, first option, one first idea, is to, for uh, the point I, to use I over N, okay, point 0.2, point 0.4, point 0.6, point 0.8, and 1. So what, what would that do? So in our first, uh, w yeah, here, for the first um, uh, point, it means that the CDF will go up of point 0.2, 1 over 5, exactly at that point. So we would have a CDF that goes this way, and then it goes up at that point. So it's constant in between and then it goes up at that point, then this point, and then this point, and then in this point. Maybe I'll do that a big, bit bigger. But look, the problem with this is that you are assigning the point to probability. Uh, everything's already assigned at that point. This point two, we wanted to go to point two there, but we're already there here. If you do that, so an idea is just to go when you have the data point, which is um, and the data point is likely to be in average in the middle of that box since we are uh, the, we define the box uh, with the frontiers each time in the midpoint between the two observations um, the data point is more or less in the middle the idea is to go down so I'll, I'll use green to go down for half of this point two and say that the probability for the point i will be uh, i over n minus one half of one over n which is i minus 0 0.5 over n And with this approach, uh, what is it? you are going up only halfway. Oops, that 
was too much. So, remember the goal of the PP plot, and QQ plot. We are actually plotting these uh, red or green points against the smoothed continuous distribution we have fitted. So it makes much more sense to um, compare the green point with the line rather than the red point because this green point will be more or less in the middle of that box and that's where the CDF is likely to to go through and you can see in this drawing that these green points are much closer to the line uh, the blue line I've, I've drawn here than the red points. The red points will never be uh, will never be close to the line because the line will, will um, uh, in average reach that level, the level of the red point here, only halfway after the, that data point to the, the other point. So that's the rationale behind this i minus one half over n.